Here is what is on the sewing table today. I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. This one, I'm gonna do a talk through as I sew, just so I can explain to you everything that I'm doing with this. I feel like recreating things in bridal the way that they were originally made, I feel like that is the obvious way to sew it. So a lot of times that's not what I teach. So the angle of my channel, most often in the videos, is so that you can find ways to offer other options to your brides to where you can give her, you know, not just this option of like, okay, well, I can recreate this whole thing and it's, you know, a thousand dollars because maybe, you know, obviously most of the brides don't have that kind of money and you don't have that kind of time. Or, or maybe she says like, can you shorten the sleeves? Um, you know, and, and, and you're underpricing yourself. And so you're like, sure. Um, $40 is, is that okay? You know, and she's like, I guess, you know, and you're looking at this and what you're doing is you're reverse engineering. And so you're like, all right, so I'm going to split this and I'm going to kind of put these other little facing pieces on here and re-sew the buttons. And then I've got to like bind this and put the button looping here and applique all this on. And so you're going to recreate this and it's going to take many, many hours and you are going to lose money and you're going to lose out on important family time, important moments in your lifespan that you've been given. You've been given a set number of moments, right? Uh, we don't know how much time we have. So it's precious and we need to make sure that we're pricing ourselves fairly for the bride and fairly for ourselves. So that is the angle of my channel. And so what I want to show you with this, just to explain all that is I'm going to show you a little bit of a shortcut option for moving this up without having to completely recreate this. So yes, it's actually quite simple to recreate this. It's pretty clear how to recreate this. Anybody could figure it out. You could take some pictures. There's probably 5,000 steps to it and it would take you many, many hours, right? But it's a little bit harder sometimes to figure out a fast way to move this up that still looks good and professional and finished to where you can still make a good, comfortable, fair living wage and your bride has a nice finished result. So that's what I'm showing you here. We're going to shorten this. So I just wanted to explain that whole philosophy so that you understand the scope of the alteration here. And a lot of my videos go into that on this channel. I'll either show you like the easy, the middle of the road and the advanced way, or I'll show you the quick way or whatever. And I usually go into explaining which way we're doing and why, just in case you're new to my channel. That is the angle that we do here. So let me show you this pin right here is the finished length that she wants the um, this kind of pinch of her sleeve to hit on like the inside of her wrist. Okay, like right there where I'm bending my wrist, this part, that pin where it's going through right there that's hitting that okay so we can feel very secure in cutting this off right here and knowing that this new mesh length is the proper f final length of her sleeve all right then that will leave us with this cuff we don't want to just stick the cuff up here and then have this like double thick mesh right and then also you'll have sleeve seam binding this together. This won't be pretty here. So I'm going to show you how to move that up and navigate all this. I'm going to go ahead and put you on a tripod 
and let's get to work here guys it's really not hard i have already prepped the taking in of the sleeve that's a whole other video okay so i stopped the seam to be equivalent to generally what this length is here that we're going to need for this vent so we're just going to pretend like that doesn't exist because you don't always need to take in a seam. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and cut across, and I am going to cut across this lace, making sure not to hit that seed bead and dull my scissors. Going right across here, right where that mesh goes through that safety pin. All right. There we go. Got within one little cell wall. So that is the perfect length for us. And I'm going to open her original seam. This would have been on her forearm. We are greatly shortening this sleeve. Remember these dresses are made for five foot 10. So we have to really shorten the sleeve. A lot of times too, guys, I have a bit of a storytelling element to my channel. I like to talk you through what I'm doing. And I also like to either tell you like a story of the bride or something else that's going on. And boy, do I have a story to tell you this week. And this really gets into kind of the lifestyle things that we face in this industry when you're in the bridal sewing business all right so i'll get into that story in a bit but um i will tell you that one of my kids um got injured this past week really badly it was it was just horrible everything's okay don't get worried about that but there's quite a story around that about with my business and all that. So I'll tell you about that in a minute. But here's the seam allowance that goes along here. I want you to see that. See how wide that is? So that's normal to have that in there. Okay, keep that in mind. So I'm gonna cut like this, kind of that same distance from the seam. Okay. Now, just like a coloring book, I'm going to go around the lace and cut around like the lines of a picture in a coloring book. I'm not going to go too deep into here, okay? I'm just going to do a nice little border. you go too deep in you're gonna have so many little bitty phalanges and twigs and sprigs <laughs> to have to sew down it's too much all right so we're gonna keep on cutting while i cut i'll tell you the story so my son works on all kinds of things and um he was working on something and he got very badly burned very badly burned second degree burns on his face and a horrendous pain so I get the call all right again I'm matching this seam allowance here I get the call right as I start an appointment with the bride and this was an extended appointment she had traveled there we go See that? She had traveled several hours, so I had to work in like several fittings. Like she had to try it on and I had to make an adjustment and her try it on again. And so they were really spending some time with me that day. And um, so I got the call right at the start of her appointment. And so I came out and apologized. I was like, I'm sorry, I started late, but you know, we have this emergency. 
and um, I'm still doing your appointment. He's going to be fine, but we might have some interruptions as I kind of, you know, keep abreast of the situation. All right, so now back to the sleeve, make sure nothing's flipped. This is wrong. Let me show you. This is wrong, right? You don't want to put the beads to the beads. Notice that this is wrong side out, right? So you want this to be wrong side out. Like that, when you slide it in like a cuff. Pardon me, this is editing Brenda here. I just wanted to mention some brides want more negative space and some brides want more lace. So at this point, you're going to want to ask your bride, does she want you to stack this lace here to keep the lace or does she want you to remove any lace that might overlap? This bride loves her lace, so I just overlapped it. It's a personal preference, no right or wrong. Just take some finagling. Just gonna pin this in a few places and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here I'm not looking for this to be perfect by the way do, do, do. all right let me reach in here and fish her out we're gonna turn her right side out now oh we lost one Good thing we put three of them in there. All right, so we got this right side out now. Guys, this, this is not rocket science. This is just fidgety stuff, okay? Fidgety. So you're just gonna watch me fidget. <laughs> this is why I was like, this is definitely the perfect one for story time this week, definitely. All right, so see how I'm doing this? I'm gonna take this and fold it. And I'm just going to pin this thing to death. And don't worry about having too much of this mesh on here. Remember, they had plenty of seam allowance. And also, after you sew this, um, you can trim away any seam allowance that shows in a sloppy way. So don't stress about that. Okay, so anyways, on that, on that sewing day... I just went ahead and sewed and we had the appointment and I saw her a few times in and out and super sweet people. Again, I'm not knocking them. That is my point. Okay. These are not hateful people. Okay. The rest of the day went on and she knew, you know, from the start of the appointment, I told her that he had, um, second degree burns on his face I told her that she knew it and um, as the day went on she like not once like not even at the end of the day I can see if she's like distracted with her dress but even at the end of the day she was not like I hope your son is okay or is everything going okay with your son like not one moment did she ask is everything okay? Not once. You can see I'm repinning this. Because remember, this cuff is resized compared to the sleeve. Remember that? Cuff is resized compared to the sleeve. So you're going to be walking this extra length out of the edge. That's why I've got all this lighting here so you can kind of see. It's kind of tricky. And really, you know, I thought about it. I was like, I've got to tell, <laughs> I've got to talk with you guys about this because it's so important. Like when you get into this industry that you understand, like we have a job to do and people are so focused on their little world, their little wedding that like 
this sounds terrible, okay, because it's not 100% true like this, but it's easy to say, like, they don't care. They don't care about your life. They don't care what you have going on. That sounds horrible, but to a degree, it's kind of true. Like, they're like, you're there for a professional service, and that's what they're there for. They're not there to necessarily be your best friend. I mean, there's there's some clients that would have very much cared and they would have been, you know, is there anything we can do for you? Do you need to go and reschedule? There's definitely clients that would have been like that, like for sure. But a lot of clients wouldn't have been, and it's not that they're not caring people. That's just how it is. Um, but I was talking to my husband about it that night when I got home and he was saying that like, that that is just so indicative of the way our culture is right now that people sometimes they can really come across as uncaring like and it's not that like i mean if you were to ask them do you not care they would almost be shocked like not care of course i care they just they're in their own little bubble they're in their own little zone and they they don't even think to say anything it doesn't even cross their minds and look at how I'm I always make sure to do this I line up seam to seam this really matters okay guys to get this to line up line up seam to seam here and then I made sure I lined up the outside center lace piece with the center tip here, okay? And then if you have to cut through a motif, which sometimes you have like a tip of lace or something that you cut through, we just add this girl, which I don't know if I'm going to include this in the video or not. I've got whole um, playlists on sewing app lace appliques. But this, this bride has got extra leaves and stuff. I'm going to fill this in with a leaf applique. So she's not going to have like a chunk missing there. It's going to look pretty. But yeah, so we're going to keep working our way around. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to applique this down. And then we're going to cut the excess. And I've got some tricks. i got to show you some fancy footwork to get around this stuff, okay? We're going to make it easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, so the reason why I thought it was important to talk to you guys about this, this is the deal. The reason why I thought it was important is because if you're not expecting that, if you don't already get it in your head ahead of time that like, People do care. It's just that they're in their own little world and they're not thinking. They're not thinking about you. They're thinking about their own little world. If you don't get that in your mind ahead of time and accept the fact that even though this is a very emotionally charged industry that we're in and we're a part of, you know, one of the biggest ceremonies of their life, like even though all of that um, we still, it's still a professional relationship. We still have a job to do, you know, if you don't have that balance kind of in place in your mind, you can burn out over stuff like that. I mean, there are people that will have something like that happen and be so disappointed in their client at the end of the day that they could about, I'm changing my thread by the way. I'm changing to um, an invisible thread. So you get to see the joys of sewing with invisible thread as well. Um, but yeah, when you're going through something as traumatic as your child was burned in the face, his entire face and neck, okay? Second degree burns. They wanted to send him to um, a burn unit okay it was terrifying it was horrible he was in horrendous pain he called me um before he even had any medical care and i could hear the amount of pain he was in on the phone i had to deal with that phone call and hang up and immediately walk into the front room and give this client their morning greeting so when you think about all of that 
and then the fact that they expressed zero concern and follow up that in itself is enough to make people literally want to shutter their business over stuff i mean that will burn people out if you don't have a proper perspective of like no it's not that they don't care about me it's that they were here for their alterations and that's the main thing they care about and my job is to give them this is the point my number one job is to give them an environment that is so beautiful and so immersive into letting them be the center of the place that they do forget about all the other cares and all the other worries. That bride left with not a worry in the world and she felt like the center of the world and she wasn't thinking about anybody else. And yeah, like we don't want her to live like that. That would be like a monster, right? That'd be like a narcissist, right? But like, that's our goal as a as a wedding vendor is I gave her a wonderful experience. Like what kind of a drag would it be if her whole day was about this horrible thing that my son was going through or how I felt, you know, that I don't want that. So at the end of the day, I did serve her the way I wanted my business to serve her. So anyhow, I thought that would be a perfect story to share with you guys um, with, I knew it was going to take a while to pin this and I didn't want it to be boring. And I also thought, because I do teach business coaching and business skills and stuff with this channel, I thought what an important life lesson because you don't want to get your heart broken in this business and have to give up your business early, you know? So. All right, we're going to sew this down and I'm going to show you some tricks. Here's your tricks. This needle is wrong. I'm getting ready to change this out. This is a nine and it's just too small. Um, the thread is going to break continually if I use this one. So I'm going to change that out to an 18. Now I get emails all the time. I followed all of your steps and the needle keeps breaking and it, it's, it's not picking up the bobbin thread and blah, blah, blah. What am I doing wrong? And I'm like, what size needle are you using? a 12 or whatever <laughs> like I said 18 that's literally the number one thing so yeah <laughs> size 18 needle is huge so we're gonna swap that out real quick and um, also thread compatibility is huge all I can say is experiment because each of my machines have has a favorite type of um, invisible thread. Like literally like down to the brand, okay? So you gotta get that established. Make sure you've got nice long tails on this. I'm lifting my presser foot so that my tensioner knobs are lifted apart, so the only tension happening is just through the threading and through the little passive tensioner that's up here on the stick. So we got that. I, I've i lowered my foot. I have a very narrow foot. A lot of people ask this. This is a narrow zipper foot, okay? It's a left, right, invisible zipper foot. I've locked it. Now I'm gonna raise this and I'm gonna go back and forth kind of in a figure eight here just to get that seam allowance really flattened. I want all of that seam allowance underneath that lace because I want this nice and tough underneath the lace. We're gonna be cutting away, like I said, some of the seam allowance just for um, beauty's sake, sheerness sake, but underneath here I want to keep as much as I can and then I'm gonna top stitch here so let's uh, let's do that let's go like this and again we're doing our little coloring book along the edges do a little zigzag here come back and I'm gonna do lock it this is so important that's another thing people forget lock it take these pins out that also lets me know where I've sewn I'm gonna sew right along here you can sew alongside or you can get right on top of that looping it doesn't matter put 
back and forth again. All right, so I'm splaying this. This is the reason why it was so important. <laughs> this high contrast light. My Lord, look at my hands. I look like an 80 year old woodworker. <laughs> I'll just show you my hands later in regular lighting. I shoot high contrast. This is hilarious. Um, anyways, um, I don't always shoot high contrast, but yeah, for this. Let me get this up so you can see. This is why it was so important for me to stack those seams together. Because I want to be able to splay this apart and know this is very important that this doesn't get messy here. I'm gonna draw a box, okay? Couple times. Go this way. And I'm gonna lock it. Lock, lock, go right across, stop even with, can you see that? Yes, you can see that. That seam right there that goes alongside the buttons. Gonna stop there. All right, I'm gonna rotate. Put her down. This is where you've just got to trust your direction. See how we got a big wad? It's okay. We're, it's gonna be straight as we sew. We're gonna have to just kind of unroll it as we sew. We got this, okay? All right, we just gotta clear the path as we sew. Get you some more light here. And get this. I'm gonna straight stitch here. See how I'm straightening it up? Gotta, excuse my hand. I gotta use my hand. Pull that needle out of there. Pull that pin out of there. All right, we're gonna keep on straight stitching till we get to that bead. We can't straight stitch over that bead. All right, back to free motion, trying to not get our finger. All right, we're gonna do a little twirl over our twirl. Let's lock it. All right, I'm gonna set my needle down. Come this way, swing her back around. I feel like a square dance collar. Swing your partner around and round. All right, let's get these other pins out because we're gonna start stabbing ourselves. And I'm gonna back you back up here so you can kind of tell what we're doing here. There you go, so pretty. All right, now let's get this applique sewn to the sleeve. Here we go. Coloring book. Every couple inches we're gonna stop. Stop it and lock it. It's best if you leave your needle down so you don't lose your place. You guys know that. It just happens sometimes. I actually kind of break that rule all the time. All right, I'm gonna just come across here just so I can get some of these pins out because I need to be able to curl this. Yes much better all right i don't use that pen to hold my place all right so i'm gonna make a little bowl i'm gonna sew in the bowl
There we go. Put all our little corners down. You know what? I bet you guys have some stories just like what I was telling you. Feel free to share in the comments. We are a sewing community here and I make sure to keep it clean and nice. I do not let there be a mean sewing community in the comments here. I would love for you guys to share some stories of when you had something going on in your life and you had a the show must go on kind of moment like I had this week. And again, keep in mind, like, my son is okay. Thank goodness. I'm so grateful. He is okay. But I would love to hear your stories of times when, you know, there was a wedding date coming up and you just had to, you know, you had to rise to the occasion. You don't get to curl up and just suffer. <laughs> go through whatever the trouble is you know there's something hung up in here do, 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 do. invisible thread you know how that'll do it I think my box my box got too tight when that happens I just snip a few times snip and release and if it overly releases, then I just sew back over it again. But I do remember I locked at the beginning and at the end. And I sewed around quite a bit, so it might will be okay. All right, so we have all one piece. It's beautiful but we have fluffies. We're gonna trim those away. And actually, I'm gonna, I am gonna go ahead and sew that pretty piece of lace on for you. Here we go. There she be. Oh, it's so much more elegant. Lock it. So let's trim this away. This is the way we're going to do it. Now this is the original cuff seam allowance that we're trimming away. I think. Sometimes I do this another way, too. I think sometimes this ends up being on the inside, too. It all depends. Just depends on what's easier to get at. All right, so we've got that. And then I know I want to trim. Ah, that's part of what's holding it up. I know I want to trim some of the stuff away that's on the inside too. Way too much stuff on the inside. Way more seam allowance than what we need. Guys, if you want to learn more about bridal sewing, I do have a course bundle 
called the Bridal Sewing Breakthrough, just go to my website, bridalsewing.com. You can also get your free hems identification guide if you want a guide that has pictures of all the most common types of hems that you will see for wedding dresses and bridesmaids dresses um i've got a guide for you for free that you can sign up for and get bridalsewing.com the information will be in my video description please go get you that i would love for you to join the community here i'm just i'm literally just trimming away anything extra because i don't want it to be like extra dark you know you don't want piled up mesh you want it to be as sheer as possible all right so there she is and of course i'm going to steam it before i put her on it but you'll see it in the thumbnail the before and after it'll be lovely just remember i need you to hit subscribe so many of you guys come through to learn how to do this and all i ask to show thanks is just hit subscribe it's a huge blessing to me i'm a pro sewist who makes learning to sew easy so that you can DIY this or you can make your own sewing skills better. Hit subscribe so you don't lose track of me. I hope this has helped you. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm always present in all of my comment sections. Bye.